Hi, it's Steph, and we're at Walmart. And my store finally got all of their summer blooming bulbs. And I even found caladiums. So let's go ahead and take a look at the March inventory of gardening supplies at Walmart. I have lots of veggie starts. So some asparagus, garlic, onion sets, um, and potatoes, as well as some bare root strawberries. So if you're looking for any of these for your produce this spring to get planted, they have plenty to choose from. It looks like they have 100 onion bulbs for $3.24. That's actually a really good price. And the bags are clear so you can inspect them. These look to be in pretty good shape. You're going to want to make sure that they're firm. You don't see any signs of molding. Um, and if they have good weight to them, it means they are not dehydrated. So that's always a good sign. And so good price on those. Some garlic which you really could get grocery store garlic and um, as long as it's organic, it will sprout for you and grow it that way. There are hard neck and soft neck varieties. There's also some that you plant in the fall and some that you can plant in the spring. So if you wanna to try to grow garlic, something to think about and look into. Asparagus, now this is actually a perennial vegetable. So you plant it once. It does take two to three years before you start getting any kind of um, asparagus, but they do send up these pretty ferns that um, make it an interesting plant. So you get the um, roots here. You have the Jersey giant variety. You get three bare roots for 324. And the Mary Washington, you get four roots for 324. They have some more onions and they have yellow version of onions as well as the red and then the mixed variety and some potatoes. So in potato varieties, they have the Gold Rush, the Red Norland and the White Superior. And they also have Yukon Gold. Some strawberries. So the varieties of strawberries they have here are the All Star, the Quinault and yeah, Quinault and All Star. So what to know about strawberries is that there are two varieties. There's the June bearing and there, see you can see here it says June bearing and then there's the um, all season bearing. So you'll get intermittent fruit throughout the growing season. So you'll, you know, if you plant a little of each then you can extend having strawberries all summer long. Daylilies. So this one here is called Grape Magic. You get two roots for $3.24. Now these are a little bit trickier to inspect because they're in a green package. But just go by weight. Sometimes if you hold them up to the light, you might be able to see if there's any kind of roots sprouting. These are a little bit more opaque, um, so a little bit difficult to tell. But this variety is pretty, it's a nice, it looks like a pink, a little bit of a maroon, which may, they might consider the purple grape portion of it. And let's see, 12 to 15 inch spacing, and they get 18 to 24 inches tall. Now these may or may not bloom the first season, but by season two from bare root, you should get some blooms. But they're a great affordable way to start a garden. What other types do they have here? Ah, echinacea. So they have the traditional Echinacea purpurea, which is a native cone flower. Pollinators absolutely love these. And it looks like you get two roots for 324. Plant in full sun, blooms summer, pollinator friendly, and it naturalizes. It seeds itself freely. So that's a great perennial to have. This one's really cool. It's like, um, it's purple, but they call this a type of blue flower. And this is the Blue Sea Holly or Oryngium. Oryngium. And here you get two roots for 324. I actually have these in my garden that I grew from bare root. I have two plants, which I had bought in a package like this, and they've been blooming for me for a couple of years. It's probably been about four years now that I've had them, and they are beautiful. They're very spiky, like a thistle, but they make such a pretty stately flower. They grow in an upright habit, and they do, because the flowers tend to be a little bit heavy and they're a little tall, they could benefit from some staking. So something to keep in mind for the Oryngium. Oryngium. Okay, hollyhocks. Hollyhocks are a beautiful cottage garden type flower. This particular variety is perennial, but there are also annual hollyhocks. The biggest issue that you'll encounter with hollyhocks is they get rust. So their leaves will start to get rust. Um, they do bloom from the bottom to the top, I believe, similar to, say, a foxglove. And this variety here is just red, 
plant in full sun, blooms in summer, two roots for $3.24. And there you go, they're pretty tall, so they also could use some staking. 48 to 72 inches in height. It shows you some instructions on how to plant the bare roots and it tells you the lighting conditions and depth of planting and so forth. So the cards are a great reference for information on the plants. Now this variety is beautiful. This is the pink version. You also get two roots for uh, 324 and then some Asian lilies or Asiatic lilies. So they have the stargazer and look how beautiful that is. These also have a very strong fragrance. I think it's a nice fragrance. Some people might not like them. Um, so the Stargazer one, you get three bulbs for $3.24 and plant in full sun to partial shade, blooms in summer and they're fragrant and excellent for cutting flowers. This pollen can get your clothes dirty. So if you brush up against the flower, you might get a little pollen on you. Um, and these here, let's see. They bloom in summer, full to partial shade, full sun to partial shade. They get to be 24 to 48 inches tall. I find that these are pretty sturdy. Their stalks are pretty strong, but sometimes with the weight of the blooms, they might start to tip a little bit. This one is a mixed, look at this one, it has yellow in it as well. In my experience, any package like this, because yellow tends to be one of my lesser favorite colors in the garden, although I am liking this lighter shade of yellow now, um, Anytime I buy a mix like this, usually it's yellow blooms and never like the pinks that I would prefer. Uh, but this one here is really pretty as well. Three for uh, three bulbs for three twenty-four, and then they have another variety. This one here, so they have the Stargazer, and then they have this one, which is the Oriental mix. The most common daylily you'll ever find, the Stella d'Oro, but these look really pretty planted in a mass grouping with, say, something purple like a Nepeta or cat's pajama or a cat. Mint, cat mint is what it's called. I have a variety called cat's pajamas, so I was about to say that. But yeah, so they are pretty, they're very abundant, and you can divide them pretty often because they grow really fast. And you get two roots for 324. And then hollyhock black. This one is gorgeous. I've actually, there's a farmhouse that is on the road to my home that grows these along the side of their home and they have a light colored house. So these always catch your eye as you're driving by. Beautiful. So these are black hollyhocks, same as the others. So you plant them in sun, they bloom in summer. This variety says it's perennial. There are some hollyhocks that are biennial, which means that they, one year you just get foliage, the second year you'll get blooms and then the plant cycle is done. And then you would just plant more seeds in the cycle, you know, to keep the cycle going. But um, it says perennial, so I don't know how accurate that might be. I believe the black varieties are biennial. Some more sea holly, some yellow hollyhocks. Now this yellow I like, that's pretty. Or lily of the valley and some regular lilies. We just saw those. So lily of the valley is one that, while very pretty and dainty looking with these little bell-shaped flowers, can become invasive. If you don't mind, these look really pretty underneath trees. They say to plant in partial to full shade and they bloom in mid-spring. Fragrant blooms, great for borders. And you get five roots for 542. And then they have some, let's see. I believe those are toad lilies, but correct me if I'm wrong. Um, I'm not sure that I can pronounce the name, but we'll give it a shot. Tricertus. Tricertus herda. Let's go with that for now. And you get two roots for 542. It's a perennial, returns each year, plant in partial to full shade, blooms in late summer. Great for borders. They're really cool looking. Um, I think for some reason that these might be small blooms. But if you know, put it in the comments. I'd be interested to know. So they bloom in late summer and they get 18 to 24 inches in height. And you get two roots for 542 is the Blue Wonder. It's a really interesting looking bloom. That Two for 542. And then they have Rutabecchia, which is a great, great perennial. Pollinators also love this and it blooms later in the summer. So as you're starting to transition from summer through fall, these will show up. So the Rutabecchia, this variety is called Goldstrom, which is a really popular one. You get two roots for 542. Plant in full sun to partial shade, blooms in late summer. Great for borders. Look at that. 24 to 36 inches in height. I 
I've never seen orange flocks before. Look at that. It almost, I thought when I looked at first that it was a geum, but it is a phlox. So it is phlox orange perfection. You get two roots for 542. Plant in full sun to partial shade. Blooms summer, fragrant blooms, great for borders. And these get to be 24 to 36 inches in height. That is really cool. Some more phlox, and this one is a mixed bag. So you get three roots for 542, and you want to plant it in full sun to partial shade. And that looks like pink, white, and purple. And then peonies or peonies, depending on how you say it. I say peony. And here they have a sorbet variety. This one's beautiful. Look at the ruffles on that. And you get one root for 542. I have quite a few peonies that I've started from bare root and they do really well. It does take them a couple of years to establish with peonies. And when you're buying bare roots, the number of eyes on the bare root will tell you how many bloom stalks you'll get that year. So it might not be many the first couple of years, but eventually they do grow into a beautiful plant. And this is the variety I have in my garden that's absolutely beautiful and they are so fragrant. This looks like almost like an English rose. I have the David Austin, um, Olivia Rose Austin, and it looks very similar to this in terms of the ruffles and color. So the Sarah Bernhardt, you get one for $5.42. And then some more lilies. Look at this variety, the Forever Susan. Isn't that gorgeous? It's like an orange with a dark maroon, almost burgundy purple color. And you get three bulbs for $5.42. And then this one that looks like a creamsicle color is Durango. And you get four bulbs for $5.42. Bleeding Hearts. These are an absolute beauty in absolute beauty. Gorgeous. They have these little heart-shaped blooms, beautiful foliage. Um, this is a spring bloomer I want to say late spring yep late spring probably early summer is more like it really pretty grows well in the shade but in my experience even though it's advertised as a shady type plant full sun does great as well which actually it seems like people have come around to that because it does say plant in full sun to partial shade and you get one root for 324 some more day lilies so we here we have a variety called once in a lifetime and it looks like a mix of day lilies. And that one you get three for 542. And then this one is night beacon and you get two for 542. And then this one, little missy. Little I'm guessing means that the blooms might be a little bit smaller and you get two roots for 542. Let's see if there's any information on the little missy. It's, um, let's see, 16 to 24 inches in height. So more of a front of the border type daylily. And then this variety, which I have in my garden, it's very pretty, also started it from bare root, final touch. And it does look like this. Sometimes you don't know what you're getting when you buy these bare roots, but I'm happy to report this one does look like this daylily in the photo. It's got a, a lighter pink with a darker rose pink and a yellow throat. Now daylilies I absolutely love when they're in bloom, but the reason they're called daylilies is because each bloom only lasts one day. But once the foliage starts yellowing at the end of the season, they're not my favorite. But when they're in bloom, they're impressive. I have a video of a day of a lily tour that I did last summer and they are just beautiful. And this one is called Blackberries and Cream. This one's really pretty. It's got this cream with a little bit of the burgundy on the edging and on the inside, with a yellow throat, beautiful. Get two roots for 542 and some clematis so let's see what varieties of clematis so this one here is called venosa violacea violacea and it looks like a purple with a lighter um, center here and you get one root for 542 now what i've been learning about clematis i mentioned that i don't have great luck with these um, and some tips that comments have been giving me is that they like to be planted very deep they like good compost and they like to be fed so maybe that will help someone out there who is struggling with clematis like I was. Uh, this one is HF Young. I'm pretty sure this is a very common variety. Pretty purple blooms. They almost look like they have a darker purple with more lavender on the foliage in the center here on the leaves. And this one here is called City of Lion. It's like a pink clematis, really pretty. These are all one root for 542. 
and you can grow these on a trellis but you can also grow them up trees so let's say you have a spring blooming tree that is you know only interesting in the spring but not any other time of the season you could almost put like a fishing wire loosely going up the trunk and growing these up the tree to offer some blooms in the summer I thought that was a pretty clever idea that I saw someone do recently all right, so hollyhocks, this is a mixed variety. You get three for $5.42. And then hosta. I think I'm actually going to pick up one or two of these. Um, I'm having a shade, I have a shade area that I am trying to develop, but I'm having a hard time with deer. So I try not to spend too much on hosta. I prefer to either swap with someone and get a trade or buy them like this inexpensively because I'm essentially putting out deer salad. Um, but these, these are beautiful. You can get so much color in a shade garden through the different foliage or foliage that's available on hosta. So here you have a variety called Minutemen, uh, Minuteman, and it is 542 for two roots. This variety is the one that I'm interested in, the Hosta Olive Bailey Langdon, and you get two for 542. Look how beautiful that is. The chartreuse on the outside with this blue green in the center, really pretty. And then Patriot Hosta, which is another very common variety, but also very pretty. It has green in the center with a white outer edge. I have this lily. It is gorgeous. The Easy Whisper. Um, in my July garden tour of last year, you can see it around my water, um, my bubbler there, my water fountain, my bird bath. Beautiful. And this one you get eight bulbs for $11.47. And then this variety is called Child in Time. It's a pink. And then Brasilia. And they have some more here. So lots of lilies to choose from. This one looks like a tiger type lily. It's called Must See. Then they have this one that's called Red Velvet. These are all eight for eleven forty-seven. And this one is called Muscadet. And dahlias. No shortage of dahlias. We'll go over those. But I can't believe how much selection of lilies they have. So if you're a lily lover, tons to choose from. This one's called First Romance. And they have Pink Romance and Smart Romance. And then they have this one here, which is called Hashi. Forever Linda. This one's gorgeous. Look at this. And then a yellow one called um, Fada Morgana. Really pretty. This dahlia caught my eye. I absolutely love any kind of salmon, coral type dahlia. This one's called Orange Impact. It looks like it's going to be a dinner plate dahlia. These bags are clear so you could inspect them. There's already some roots going on in there. It's got good weight to it, which is always a good sign. It means that the dahlias are nice and plump. They should look like little potatoes instead of you know sh being shriveled up. And you get four for $11.47. And then they have, this one's called Purple Tejo, I have this one. It's got a very loose type um, petal. And then Smoky is that one there. And then there's Maldini, which is this fuchsia with a little bit of white on the tips. Crazy Love. I have a Ferncliff Illusion that looks like that. And then Cambridge. Bora Bora. Bitsy. And this really lovely red one. I'm becoming more of a fan of red blooms as the years go on. Look at that. This one is called Arabian Night. Oh, I think this is a popular one too. Really pretty. And this pretty white one is called My Love. And here are the Caladiums. Now I've done a Lowe's and a Home Depot tour of bulbs in the last month and none of them had caladiums and I had some commenters ask about them whether or not I had seen them around so if your Walmart has gotten their bulbs there's a good chance that they have caladiums so these just arrived at my store and it is now towards the end of March so it could be that they were just a little late to arrive but let's see the varieties that they have so this one is a mix and you get five bulbs for 542 and then they have caladium Carolyn Wharton and that one is also Five for 542 and then this one this one's my favorite of these that I see here this white one look at that gorgeous veining almost reminds me of the Brunner leaves but those are a little more silvery and blue but this one's called Candidum Candidum 
Again, you get five for 542. And then this one here is called Blaze, and you get five for 542. So here are the caladiums. Now, these do feel pretty light. I picked them up a second ago. Um, so you kind of want to try to move this packing material, this medium around, and kind of inspect to see how they feel. Do they feel firm? Do they feel mushy? Some things to consider before picking these up. But here they are. Some begonia. This one's called Picati, Picati Pink and White. You get three bulbs for 542. There's a yellow one called Pendula Yellow. And some cannas. So quite a few variety of cannas. So they have this one called Picasso. And this one is a mix. Lucifer, which is a really pretty um, red with yellow. And then this Crimson Beauty, which Crimson would remind me of something red, but it almost looks like a coral pink. And then this dark one, which is absolutely gorgeous. It is called Black Night. Look at that foliage. So pretty. Now these are tropical, so while you see them in the stores, I'm in a zone six, it is still too cold to plant these outside. So you would wanna wait until your last frost date to put these in a container, but you could also start them a little bit early in some potting mix and put them in a nice, warm, south-facing, sunny window, which I have a video that I did that recently with some bare roots and I actually planted up a canna if you wanted to check that out and you get three bulbs for 542 lots more dahlias we'll just kind of scan through them they have a Pacific Ocean a Pacific Time this mixed one that's called turnings Let's see what is that called Twining's Smarty. And that is a multicolored bloom, which is really pretty. And then they have Zingaro. Oh, some Gladiola. So these are really pretty. They get really tall, so you'd want to plant them up against a fence or provide them some staking. Look at this dark one called Espresso, and then there's one called At Night. That is gorgeous. Look at that. 16 bulbs for 542. Not a bad price want to just do a little clump of them these feel nice and heavy you want to just inspect the bulbs no signs of mold feel if they're firm and then they have a mixed variety a pink one called my love and a pastel mix as well as the red white and blue mix some dutch iris and some elephant ears before we look at the elephant ears, I just want to point out that this is an absolute gorgeous dahlia. They're not big. They're a small bloom, maybe four inches or so, and they are so abundant. Prolific bloomer all summer long, beautiful light pink on the outer or front of the petal, and then on the back is a burgundy color like this, a, a, do a darker like fuchsia pink. Beautiful. And you get two bulbs for 542 options when it comes to the elephant ears they have this variety here where it is a smaller bulb or um, these are corms or bulbs um, is what you call these and you get three for 542 and then they have the really large one which they consider the mammoth and those are here and the this called a jumbo this variety they call jumbo but sometimes you'll find them called mammoth and you get one bulb for 542 and look at these now you want to plant these with this pointy with the this side here. It almost looks like a like a bullseye and it has these little nubs on them. This is the side that you want to plant upward. This is where the growth will start shooting up. So you plant them that side up. These are also tropical. They like warmth. If you have a, a heat mat, you can sit them on the heat mat, put them in a south facing sunny window. These definitely benefit from being started early because elephant ears take quite a long time to get this beautiful big foliage going. Some more perennials, bare root perennials. So you have here some columbine or echolasia. These like to be planted in part shade. Beautiful spring flower. So it says it blooms early summer, probably late spring to early summer. And you get three roots for 542. Some of Stilby. This variety is really pretty. It's got a little bit darker foliage. It's still green, but just darker. And it's called Chocolate Kiss with these really pretty, fuzzy, plumy type blooms. And my bare root of Stilby took about two seasons before it bloomed for me.
The first year I planted, I just got foliage. The second year I got some blooms. By year three, it was nice and full. They have Red Sentinel and Sunny Boy. I also have this variety in my garden. Really pretty. That one's more, um, a little bit of a purple pink. Two Roots 542. Ah, White Bleeding Heart. So pretty. Oh, and they even have one with this ferny type foliage. So let's see. The Bleeding Heart, the white one is called Alba. You get two roots for 542. And then the one with the fern foliage is called Luxuriant. And the blooms on these are a little bit different. I prefer these blooms because they look more like a heart shape. Um, these are just a little bit different, but the foliage is really pretty. Two roots for 542. And poppies. So these are perennial poppies. There are annual poppies and perennial poppies. This is the perennial variety. I have a type like this that um, comes back every year. It's called uh, Princess Louise, something to that effect. But I really am after the white one. The uh, Royal Wedding, I believe the white is called. And then red. So this is a mix. Chances are they would all be red because I'd be hoping for one of these two colors. But three roots for 542. And this one is already gone. So someone was really interested in these and I can see why they are beautiful peony festiva maxima 542 for one root this is a white peony with a little bit of red speckling in the center as the bloom opens up they have a colorful echinacea mix this one's called butterfly mix and you get pinks and yellows and whites and this corally orange color and you get three roots for 542 have some liatris so this one's called, it's a purple variety. Liatris is also known as gay feather. It's a perennial, has these beautiful spiky fuzzy type of blooms, this grassy type foliage below. The pollinators absolutely love this. And you get 16 roots for 542. And Nephophia, or red hot poker, also a really pretty upright spiky type bloom. This variety here is like an orange with a little bit of yellow. It's transient, so it almost looks like it's doing this um, color transition. Ombre, really pretty. Three roots for 542. And ferns, these are great for a shade type garden. This variety is called Tennessee Ostrich Glade and it says to plant in partial to full shade summer to fall foliage. What a beautiful way to add some interest and texture to a shade garden, ferns. And from what I understand, deer do not like the texture of ferns, so this might be safe or resistant to some extent for deer. So um, this one here, you get two roots for 542. It does naturalize. It sends out these, um, I believe they grow by runners. And uh, they're really cool when they start unfurling. They look like a little curl and then they open up the ferns. So this variety here is called Fern Christmas. Plant in partial to full shade, summer to fall foliage, long lasting color. And this one here is cinnamon fern has those uh, sticks that come up in the center that look like sticks of cinnamon. And this one here, plant in partial to full shade, summer to fall foliage, naturalizing, long lasting color. Really pretty. So 542 for two fern roots. They have some pretty wind chimes. I actually just got one of these from my boys for my birthday. I really like the natural wood color with the black. I thought it was really sharp. And they are 1288. And then these are pretty as well. It looks like it has a little wind spinner at the top. And it has this copper finish. This one's cool. It's going to spin with the wind. I like that. 1288 as well. And then the butterfly one. And then some garden tchotchkes. That's what my husband calls them. I have a little gnome and a frog. These are $9.96. And these wind chimes are so pretty. They have a hummingbird and they have a solar panel at the top. So this must light up. Let's see with that picture. Well, the picture doesn't show us anything, but that is so cute. Some flickering pathway lights and these cutouts give a really cool design effect. Look at that. And these are 987 for one. And that's what it looks like. Yeah. 
some solar lights. That stake there looks like a sunflower, actually. And these are $14.78. This one looks to be a tulip of some kind. And these little clear daisy looking ones. They're LED lights. And what an adorable lantern. It looks like a little cage lantern with an Edison type of bulb. And it has a solar panel at the top. And you can hang it from a tree. Imagine a few of these hanging from a tree in the evening. So pretty. They're solar powered. And let's see how much they are. They are $9.94. And they're starting to get all of their spring gardening tools in. Now I have a few of these pieces from their Expert Gardener line and they're pretty good. Actually one of my favorite hand tools is a little, um, I believe they call it a cultivator. It has a hoe on one side and a little rake on the other and it works really well for digging holes. But the pieces are really affordable at just about $4.97 a piece. And they also have some Fisker brand items. I've never seen this before. It's a Fisker's soil block maker. And it looks like you would fill it with soil and you'd pop out this little soil block, soil block with a spot for your seed. And those are $19.97. And such pretty watering cans. I really like this large navy blue one. It has one of these rain head type spigots, which I like because they're nice and gentle when you're watering your plants. They don't splat up a bunch of soil, unlike these spout types. These are really good if you want to be really uh, specific as to where you're aiming your water. Those are really helpful. But they have these in the large variety or the large version for $26.88. This medium sized one with a spout for $14.97. And this little one that is really good for house plants for $9.97. But these would be really pretty Mother's Day gifts for the mom who's a gardener in your life. And they have these hand tools in these pretty shades of mint green, really soft spring colors. They actually even have hoses. Now I don't know what quality these hoses would be. They're by Better Homes and Gardens and they look to be 50 foot length for $39.94. And here where they have their fertilizers, I just found a bag of earthworm castings by this brand called Earth Science for $9.98, which is a really great price. Now I'm not familiar with this brand, but earth castings in general are a really great additive when you're growing uh, some vegetables. They provide a lot of nutrients to your soil. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab a bag of these so I can add it to my planting hole for my veggies. They've also received lots of bare root roses and there's quite a few varieties and these here in the Garden Expert or Expert Gardener line are $9.97. So let's check out a few of the kinds that they might have. CL Blaze, it's a climber. There's a Shirley's Bouquet, which is a hybrid tea. Oklahoma, let's see what this one is. Gypsy. Pink Peace, Julie Andrews, a hybrid tea, this White Lies, which is a Florabunda. This one here is a hybrid Ragosa, which Ragosas are usually beach roses, and that one is called Therese Bugnet. Midas Touch, hybrid tea, Peak Performance. There's a Mark Chagall in the back there, Aura Gold. They have quite a few. This Marc Chagall is pretty. It almost looks like a um, mottled or a tie-dye type rose. So quite a few. And then they have another variety below. Let's take a look at those. Look at this really pretty climber. It's a bright pink or a medium pink color called CL America, large flowered climber. It has 30 to 35 petal count. They have these True Bloom roses, which I've seen sold at Lowe's last summer. And these are the bare root type that come in these, um, some people refer to these as body bag roses. Um, the, so the varieties that they have here, these are $12.84. And I see this pink one that's called True Inspiration. This orangey yellow one that's called True Sincerity. And there is a red one called True Passion. 
And one of my very favorite fertilizers to use is this Alaska Fish Fertilizer. I can't believe how much the price on this has gone up. When I started gardening, it used to be about five to six dollars for one of those size bottles. But it is a 511. It's great for all indoor and outdoor plants for organic gardening. And this stuff stinks terribly but the plants absolutely love it. And so last year I actually invested in one of these bigger bottles because I use it so often. Um, and I thought that overall you're getting two and a half to three times the amount for $23.97 versus the small bottle. But if you just wanted to try it, that's a good size to try out. They're starting to get in some really pretty planters. And I like these white ones. I prefer to have white planters for inside house plants because I just think they're pretty neutral. But they have some pretty options here. And they also have this one that looks like rattan or like a basket type planter that you can put some feet on to make it a raised planter. And it feels like a plastic type material, so it can probably be used outdoor. In fact, the tag does say, does say here it can be used with or without screw-on legs, clear plastic insert for added protection, and outdoor indoor use. It's really pretty. Let's see how much this is. $29.97. I've been using these solar lights here in my garden for the last couple of years, and I really like them. Um, the price on these have gone up quite a bit as well. I actually used to pay 12 and change for them and now they're $16.76. You get two solar powered LED spotlights. They're 20 lumens each and they give you a 10 foot beam and I use them to uplight my trees. So my Japanese maples or any kind of specimen evergreen that you want to highlight, these work really well without having to have any low voltage lighting that you actually have to wire. So if you don't have an electrical source, these are a great option. And they have some of these pathway lights which look really nice along the edge of a bed or along a pathway for $19.97. Now when it comes to solar lights, there is no shortage of lights here. They even have these really cool ones that are a bit more modern that are the, um, the hook neck that kind of do a down lighting effect that are really cool. And we'll check those out. But plenty in stock at the moment in early spring. Well, very early spring. We just turned spring a couple of days ago. So this is called the Corbin Downlight and it has five to six foot suggested spacing between fixtures, rust resistant metal construction, and they are solar powered LED and they are 20 lumens of light. And they're really pretty. $13.48 each. I recently told you how I enjoy the Dollar Tree seeds. They're four packs for a dollar. Well, Walmart also has these end caps with these really affordable seeds. These are by American Seed Company and they are 50 cents a piece. I've also grown these before and they do germinate really well. There's actually a variety of sunflower down here that I'm going to grab. So here are some of their flower seeds. They have four o'clocks, poppies, delphinium, some perennial mixes and some flocks and check out this sunflower. It's a dwarf teddy bear and it's a really fluffy variety. It almost looks like a marigold. Well, I've gotten to the end of my Walmart early spring March garden inventory tour and here's what I'm picking up today. I'm gonna grab some of these Earth Science earthworm castings. This was $9.96 for this bag. This Caladium Candidum, which is a really pretty white Caladium, for $5.42 and two varieties of hosta, the Minuteman and the Olive Bailey Langdon, as well as these really cute sunflowers. So I hope that you've enjoyed hanging out with me and I will catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit the thumbs up button and please consider subscribing so you don't miss any of my future videos and we'll see you soon.